Well, we feel better than Mike's club feels right now, but uh, it's a heck of a game. They're hard to guard. They put so much pressure on you. During the course of the game, I thought they were shooting about 70% from three, and I looked down and they shot about the same thing we did. Uh, they're really hard to guard. We were hard for them to guard inside, but it's a battle. All right, we can try to get it inside, try to play to our advantage there, and they can spread us and drive us and shoot threes and play to the advantage they have because our big guys have got to come out on the court. It was decided not by us because Kennedy got in foul trouble, and so we couldn't really do that. At the last two or three minutes, we just started switching everything to see if we could stay with them. But, uh, you know, we had it 13, 14, 15, whatever it was, and uh, and about five or six calls in a row just seemed went against us, and there were calls that's part of the game. And then all of a sudden, they made a couple of big plays, made a couple of big threes. We fouled a guy needlessly on a four-foot jumper, and then at the same time, we missed a couple of shots, missed a couple of layups, and uh, all of a sudden now it's a one possession game. When it got to be the one possession game is when Joel made uh, the shot out front that we thought was a three, but it was really a two. And then we get a stop on the other end, and I think that's when we get Justin down on the break, and he scores at that point. And it made it go, I think, six at that point, but uh, they were really hard to guard, goodness gracious, and we've had some big time battles with them. It's the fourth time we played them, and it seems like the last three weeks, but I guess it's about a year. Really, how important was that trouble shot? Well, it's always important. There's no question about that. Uh, you don't want to make it a one-possession game with them having the ball. It was a one-possession game, but we had the ball. And I think it, I don't think it ever got to a one-possession game where they had the basketball. And uh, So that's always important. And, you know, Joel had not shot it very well. Justin didn't shoot it very well. I was dumb enough to call Joel's play from the outbounds underneath, and it went in. And uh, I told him it should give him some confidence anyway. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was a big shot, but getting a stop on the other end may have been just as big or even bigger, especially when we turned it into a basket by Justin. Two years ago, Notre Dame uh, came back from nine down in here, and you guys, did you have, when they got it to five and then two, did you have any flashbacks? No, and during the course of the game, I really don't ever have any thoughts about result. You know, I'm thinking about, let's see if we get a stop on the other end, or what do we want to run on offense? I mean, we ran a play, and Joel makes a good pass to Isaiah, and Isaiah wasn't even looking for the ball. So I, I try not to ever think about result during the course of the game. It's sort of like you're working at that point. You don't think about what's going to happen at the end. How big was the production you got from Tony off the bench? Well, Tony off the bench was a big force, and I tell you, somebody else was a big force was Kenny Williams. You know, Kenny's been struggling shooting the ball. And, uh, four for six from the floor, three for four from three point line, three assists, no turnovers. I think that was big force too. But I've always said uh, it's not just those five we have. We had six guys in double figures. And, Tony had more than five rebounds, but uh, I thought he got five rebounds on one possession. But, uh, or, yeah, he was able to do some good things for us. Roy, what are your thoughts on, on playing in Greensboro kind of in general since the tournament is going to be in Brooklyn and kind of make its tour to different places and HB2, the, the games that would have been here this mm -hmm. postseason get moved? You know, I'm glad that some people in Greensboro got to see us play. I'm glad we were able to take a game here because it's a stupid rule that we have in our state that took a lot of great opportunities for people in our state and great athletes that like to do things in our state. And I think I shouldn't say rule, I guess it's a law. Law is more important than a rule, I guess. But uh, I just think that's ridiculous and what it's doing to our state and the reputation of our state. Playing here in Greensboro, I was really mad, period, the end. I wanted to play in the Smith Center. The bottom line is that we have uh, people in our positions at the university and administration that made the best decision they could possibly make with the best information they had. I didn't want to do this. I like playing in the Smith Center, but I trust our people and they made a great decision and yet right now everything's cool in Chapel Hill. Again, restaurants are open, people can go to the bathroom, all kinds of stuff. And, uh, and you can go to any bathroom you want to in Chapel Hill too. So. But I didn't like it, don't like it, never will like it. But it was not good for Michael either. I mean, he would have loved to have played on Saturday. He didn't really care where we played, but he would have loved to have played on Saturday because that was better for him with the close changeover from uh, uh, here to his next game. And I told him it wasn't good for either one of us. Uh, it's been weird this year because we've had Hurricane Matthew and the junk that it put on us and the feelings that our administration had about that decision and the way we played that night. We had the state game. and problems that we had, getting everybody to understand what we're trying to do, and we played great. 
And then this one here is the most weird thing I've ever been involved in in my life. I've never seen best friend in Kansas, my golf pro in Kansas, came to see us play. I think he's going to see a big time North Carolina Notre Dame game in the Smith Center. He spent two nights in a hotel, no wheels at home, and had to leave at halftime to get back to Raleigh to catch his flight. So it wasn't very good for anybody. But the people here today, I'm thrilled. Uh, those people were into it. I love them. Wish I could say thank you to every single one of them because they were important to us winning the game. Coach, you talked about 11 guys in double figures. How much more difficult is it to guard UNC when um, six guys in double figures? Thank you. I thought, God Almighty, we're really good. <laughs> <laughs> How much harder is it to guard the team when it's not just one guy dominating the offense? Well, it's just like Notre Dame. I mean, they've got four guys that average about 34 minutes a game that all shoot mid-40s or better, and they're averaging 14, 14, 13, and 13. You know, and uh, I've always said that that's a difficult team to guard. And, uh, you know, for us tonight, like, I don't think Joel Berry made a field goal in the first half. You know, so his, his production was big for us in the second half, too. Roy, this game got real emotional, it seemed, down the stretch. Did you feed on that yourself? Did you try to get your team reined in, or did you just let it go? <laughs> I didn't let it go very well. I was pretty frustrated, so it was emotional at times for me too. It was just a frustrating series of events there at that time period. But uh, you know, ACC basketball is always going to be emotional. I mean, it's it's down to the wire. I mean, there's not many games decided where people leave and try to get out the parking lot early. And uh, but it was emotional there at the end. I mean, we were we wanted to play yesterday at one o'clock and we played a, or six o'clock, I guess it was, and we played today. So I think that made it a little bit more important to me. Coach, at, at this point in time, how do you like how your bigs are playing collectively? How do I like how? How your bigs, Isaiah Higgs. Well, uh, Isaiah had, you know, Patriots are in good shape, but the Falcons are in good shape because they got Ryan and Tom Brady at quarterback. You saw Isaiah throw 10 feet over seven with his head. <laughs> you dang sure wouldn't be quarterback. He uh, didn't play as well as I needed to play on the defensive end, but made some big <laughs> baskets for us early. Made a uh, big free throw for us late. Kennedy really did some good things. There's no reason to charge people. Uh, one of them I agreed with, one of them I did not agree with, but you can't lead with your shoulder when you're making an offensive play. But they were important for us. I mean, if we're not in foul trouble, we would have been able to stay bigger and see if we could exploit that and make that more important than their perimeter play. But we couldn't because we were in foul trouble. You mentioned Kenny earlier. Was it a matter of him being more assertive offensively in the first half? We had a discussion this week. Just talked about play basketball. You know, it's been a long time since he's got an offensive rebound for a basket. His numbers have been going down. I said, "Do you not trust me as a coach?" And he looked at me like I was weird. I said, "Well, I must think you're pretty good because I keep putting your rear end out there. So why don't you have confidence?" But uh, uh, those were big plays that he made for us today. How does Kenny's impact change when Theo isn't on the court? How did Kenny's? Uh, how does Kenny's impact change kind of the defensive stopper or even just scoring offensively when Theo's not available for you guys? Well, I've never called Theo a defensive stopper. Mm -hmm. I said he has the potential to be a great defensive player. Steve, make sure you tell him I said that when I get in the locker room. <laughs> uh, Kenny's our best perimeter defender, and uh, today he had some challenges because he played two or three different guys. But you know, he's the one that made a silly touch foul on the guy shooting the four footer. I like our guys being in the game and not over there with me in foul trouble. But uh, we hope Theo will be back soon. He's uh, getting closer. He's feeling great, and we're just trying to be cautious. Take one more. Okay, one more. How encouraging is it for you that you guys can still struggle from the three-point line and put up eight three-point You know, think about it. Okay, we did struggle. I thought they were great. We shot a tad better percentage than they did. I mean, it's. Uh, I thought Joel's three from the corner on the inbounds play was extremely important. And, uh, we, we got to make enough of it, but Kenny's early in the game sort of gave us a, the lift that we needed. I think you got to have great balance. We need those big guys scored inside, and we need some guys making three-pointers. Thanks, guys.